I'm glad you brought this back up because I was going to say, let's go back to what Maggie was talking about. She said she was very vulnerable. Yeah. It was hard for her to share. But I think that that um, probably, honestly, only the last year or two, I've it's kind of clicked in my brain that if you want to grow in relationship, and I think this would happen in any relationship, if it's your children, your friends, maybe a husband, anything, your parents, I think it's only going to grow when you actually have like come up against something like vulnerability or conflict or something and then you work through it and you sit with each other in it it builds a trust because instead of being fearful of the two of you when I've been vulnerable or we've maybe had a little conflict you have proved like shown me and proven over and over again that like okay I'm a, like I'm feel like a failure I'm not doing well right now or I'm like messing this all up I'm a horrible person Instead, you have showed me time and time again, like, I still love you. I want to be here with you. And it's given me a trust and it, like, and it just builds trust over and over and over again. Right now, I'm thinking in my mind, I'm sometimes so practical. Like, I, it's spiritual if it's practical. So I'm like, okay, how do we find friends like this? How There's got to be a step. Like, it's mm -hmm. not perfect, not 10 step, but there's got to be something you have to do. So what do you think it's going to, would be? I, I think for me, honestly the first step in being able to be close to you guys was forgiving people that I felt like wronged me and friendships that hurt me in the past. I don't think I would have ever been able to trust you guys if I wouldn't have let go of and forgiven myself and those friends for past relationships that where I really trusted someone and then I feel like they betrayed me. Yes. And I, I would say that same thing for me to extend forgiveness but also like god sent me on an apology tour a few he did. years back yes right after i moved to tennessee so you learned something new you know, about your friends I, I had an apology tour too so this is wild i have not <laughs> you were doing that wasn't so, your your thing we're going to talk about what yours yeah. is next so here comes the apology tour <laughs> talk when i moved uh to tennessee from michigan michigan uh, the years that I lived there was a desert season for me. And it was a season where I, I mean, we were friends still, but as, as far as like everyday friends who lived in the same city as me, I had none. I experienced just a lot of rejection, a lot of loneliness there. We lived there for five years and I did not really make a single friend um, that I would hang out with or talk to on any kind of a regular basis. And it was really a season where God showed me what real intimacy with him was like and friendship with God was like. So then we moved to Minnesota and that loneliness is was still there. Um, but God kind of showed me and revealed like where I needed to forgive friends who had hurt me in the past. But also I had been a terrible friend to a lot of people it felt like. And God just one by one prompted me to go back to people I hadn't talked to in years. I mean, I didn't even have phone numbers anymore for some of these people. And to apologize to them and basically repent for being like not a good friend. And it was so hard. And, you know, the amazing thing is each person responded with like such grace. I mean, this was obviously over 10 years later. Um, but yeah, that for me, I don't think if, if I wouldn't have been obedient to those things, would I have had the capacity or the maturity to have a deep friendship? I, I don't think so. Cause I was harboring so much hurt and bitterness and resentment over failed friendships in the past. I really like just wanted freedom and I wanted these friendships so badly that I dug deep and did really hard things to work through. Um, gosh, I'm going to cry again. <laughs> to work through some of that ick that had accumulated over the years. And, you know, I think that's where people get stuck because that was not fun to no. have to call up and message People that I had done, I mean, I was had been a horrible friend, gossiped, I mean, betrayed, just not kept people's confidences. I mean, all kinds of things. Um, and that was really rough to go back and face those people and apologize and also to let go of um, hurt that I had experienced in friendships. And 
and lies that I had believed about female friendships. So I had to really dig deep and do a lot of ugly, messy work. And it didn't happen overnight. It was um, years long. Like I said, I was in Michigan for five years working through just like the stuff about loving myself, letting God love me, getting to know him, letting him be enough for me. Um, and it it was hard. So God prompted me to do the same thing. And I was living in Illinois and had a season of, I don't have any friends. Like I basically had my sister-in-laws and I didn't, wasn't making any connection points, any deep things. And I was just longing and crying out to God for friendship. And that's what he dropped in my spirit is like, I need the, you need to message this person, this person, this person. Some of these people I didn't know I wasn't in, but I had hurt people. Um, and I needed to ask for forgiveness for the things that I had done. And once I did that, I felt like he gave me the ability to forgive people that I felt really wronged by. And I don't think if I would have done that step of obedience of giving out forgiveness first, like I couldn't receive that, like be able to receive like, okay, just bless that person and not wish ill will on them that have that I felt really wronged and betrayed for and felt justified in that. But the, I feel like those things stop you from being able to go deep because there was a trust level that I didn't have. Sometimes we find that like you two will be the same in something. I might be a little something, but we don't always have to be all three of us have right. the same exact experience every right. single time. And I think that's where we give each other grace or mm-hmm. find beauty in it. But um, mine was simply as you just need to ask sometimes like, hey, what do you all do? And you want to go to dinner and then be OK that And this was in the last couple of years. This is new for me because it never bothered me before. Like I said, in the last couple of years, it did. And I realized something was wrong. But it's more like I ask, I put it out there, and I'm probably going to get a lot of no's. But out of the 10 times I've asked something to do something, or can you do this? You want to do this? I'm probably going to get a lot of no's, and yeah. I'm only going to get two yeses. Right. But that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the relationship. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, I had built that in my life that, oh, they said no, or I could ask 10 different people, and I got eight no's. And so I built, I had problems with that. But in reality, that's just people's schedule Mm -hmm. that's timing or your schedule so I think that we need to give our grace sometimes you gotta reach out be a friend ask people to do stuff with you and eventually you're gonna get a yes and um so I think sometimes you just gotta be the one that's gonna step out so if you're and I hate to say it lonely being sucks but if you're gonna if you're lonely start asking people to do something and maybe it's a walk maybe it's dinner maybe it's coffee maybe it's and they might only just be an acquaintance, but you still spend time with them and it's still rewarding. If it's, mm-hmm. It might not be this kind of relationship, but it's still rewarding to be around an acquaintance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with that because I see so many women, and I was just telling you this the other day, I was seeing on an, a community Facebook page of women that I'm a part of, there was just this whole string of women saying how lonely they were and that they had no friends and... I, I know that there are a lot of lonely people out there and really, you know, it's about we have to take initiative. We have to take action instead of waiting for somebody to show up on our doorstep to build community with. And and that's hard because I've moved a lot of different times and I've had so many seasons where I just got exhausted of inviting people to do stuff all the time. And you're right, though. I mean, you just have to keep trudging forward and finding your people and what I loved there it was like a hundred comments long this this string of women saying they were lonely but there was one woman in there who she had a comment and she was like you know what I was lonely too so I decided to do something about it and she started this thing called the gathering table and she invites women out to dinner and has wrote this whole thing about how she found her community just by saying, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to invite mm-hmm. people to this monthly dinner. And she found her tribe that way. And she was reaching out to this, you know, string of lonely women saying, come be a part of it. So I think, and and I know that's hard, but we have to purpose to take action in our own lives and put ourselves out there. You know, it will look messy it sometimes will you'll feel some rejection and things won't work out, but friendship can be like dating, right? Like we ha- you have to, you know, get out there, meet people, find your connection points, pursue them, carve out the time um, to just have the opportunity to, you know, find the deep friendships in your circle of people. Yes. And even if you go to dinner with your friend, 
it's going to feel awkward the next few times still. Like, yeah. sometimes it will be, like, almost embarrassing to still ask them. Be like, oh, they're probably too busy, right? I'm going to bother them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's not that hard to say no probably for other people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If well, they can't do it. And realize there's going to be rejection. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Like, you're going to yeah. be really like somebody and ask them out and think you have a great time and then you're going to ask them out again and they're going to be like you know I'm, i i have enough friends yeah. like i've had that happen to yeah. me before but also through meeting different people it's like we talked about with your gates you're going to find maybe there will be some friction with a person and then you kind of learn more about yourself too and what you desire in a friendship um because i think for me as we're learning these gates and how we let people in it's when you come up against those tough moments that you're like, oh, why Why was that a tough moment? Oh, because kindness is my gate. Because fun is my gate. Because I need somebody who lets me be just in process and doesn't try to fix me. You know, you learn about what your needs are in a friendship just by putting yourself out there and getting around other people. 